A moment from Your History and Health Comes First with Dr. Richard Brown. Hello, Your History and Health Comes First. This is Dr. Richard Brown. I am so glad to be back with you today. It is October 5th, 2022. And it's also October Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I love October because it starts to cool down a bit. The trees start to change colors. Uh, think about holidays and uh, getting out and maybe doing a little more activity outside that you can do during the hot months. But uh, it's here. And as usual, time is moving fast. And this year, it's already three quarters over with. So today, we're going to talk about breast cancer. Now, you might think, well, who am I to be talking about breast cancer? Well, I'm a healthcare professional. Been there most of my adult life. I've dedicated my life to it. Um, I've been involved with and I've been talking about uh, public health through uh, uh, teaching health, through practicing health administration. And I also have a mother and a sister and uh, who both have passed away, and a wife and daughters and relatives who have breasts. And I myself have a breast, okay? And because men and women do have breasts and this vicious disease do attack both men and women. So let's talk about this thing. So breasts are the part of women, which is where most of the, the cancer takes place, we, we're, we're finding. Men, it's only about 1%. Um, it's the part of women that produces milk, and it's the part of the body that sustains life for children for months and months until they transition over from the breast milk to fake milk or formula, as they call it, and then on to cow's milk. I mean, cow's milk, yes. So cow's milk is produced and sold in enormous proportions throughout the world. And it is to feed children and people. But um, we don't hear about cow breast cancer, do we? Don't hear about cow breast cancer. And breasts on cows are called udders, by the way. But we have so much breast cancer among women among females, generation after generation. Why is that? This is one of the questions that have perplexed me for a while. Um, but no one seemed to have the answer. And much research has been conducted to at least try to understand this disease. And I've heard lots of lectures and I read lots of information. But as I begin to research this topic, I did find something that was most interesting uh, that I'll share with you a little later. But most of this information that I'm going to provide to you today is uh, written by Cleveland Clinic medical professionals. So let's begin. And I'm gonna go through the signs, symptoms, and, and treatment as we uh, conclude here. Breast cancer happens when cells in the breast grow and divide in an uncontrolled way creating a mass of tissue called a tumor. And there, there are sections in the hospital called tumor registries where they uh, place all of the people who have had cancer into this registry so they can study it and, and collect data on it. And this has been going on for 50 years or more ever, ever since we um, discovered this thing called cancer. And so they've been studying, they've been collecting data. Um, so signs of breast cancer can include feeling of a lump in your breast, experiencing a change in the size of your breast and seeing changes in the skin on your breast. Mammograms can help with early detection and I'll get into detail about what a mammogram is. So what is breast cancer specifically? So well, breast cancer originates in your breast tissue. So it occurs when breast cells mutate, meaning they change, and they grow out of control, creating a mass of tissue, again called tumors. 
So like other cancers, breast cancer can invade and grow into the tissue surrounding your breast. It can also travel to other parts of your body and form new tumors. So when this happens, it's called metastasis. So when the cells spread to other parts of the body, you may hear a physician or people say it has metastasized. Well, when that happens, that means it is no longer local, but it's spread throughout your body, perhaps through the bloodstream and through lymph nodes. So what is mainly affected by breast cancer? So breast cancer is one of the most common cancers among women, second only to skin cancer. And it most likely to affect women over the age of 50. So though rare, as I mentioned earlier, men can also develop breast cancer. Approximately 2,600 men develop male breast cancer every year in the United States, making up about 1% of all cases. Now, transgender women are more likely to develop breast cancer compared to cisgender men. Additionally, transgender men are less likely to develop breast cancer compared to cisgender women. So you heard a new word, cisgender. What is cisgender? You heard of a lot of other kinds of different genders, but what is cisgender? Haven't heard of that much, but this is what it is and it'll make sense to you in light of all of the different terminology we now have about gender and sexuality. But cisgender simply means that whatever gender you are now, okay, that is the same as what was presumed you were at birth, okay? So whatever the doctor guessed that you were based upon appearance at birth and you steal that, that means that the doctor got it right. And so that is what cisgender means. So, recapping, transgender women are more likely to develop breast cancer compared to cisgender men. And additionally, transgender men are less likely to develop breast cancer compared to cisgender women. So it's getting real complicated here these days. And so maybe that'll contribute to us finding some answers to some of these diseases, specifically breast cancer. So what age does breast cancer occur? Breast cancer is most often diagnosed in adults over the age of 50, but it can occur at any age. There's children that develop cancer for some reason. And uh, it just breaks my heart when I hear that because they haven't even lived life yet. So another question is what race is most affected by breast cancer? Again, overall women, who are non-Hispanic, white, have a slightly higher chance of developing breast cancer than women of any other race or ethnicity, okay? Women who are non-Hispanic, white, have a slightly higher chance of developing breast cancer than women of any other race or ethnicity. Women who are non-Hispanic, black, are almost as likely as non-Hispanic, white women to develop the disease. And this is interesting according to the article. Statistically, women who are Asian, Hispanic, or Native American are the least likely to develop breast cancer. Why is that? Well, scientists don't quite know, but there's probably an answer in there somewhere, which may contribute to what I'm going to talk about a little later in terms of what may be causing this disease. But right now, we don't know why Asian, uh, Hispanic, or Native American uh, women are less likely to develop breast cancer. So how common is breast cancer? In the United States, breast cancer is the second leading cause of, of cancer deaths in women. And this is after lung cancer. It's also the leading cause of cancer deaths among women ages 35 to 54. Now, what are the types of breast cancer? Not just one, there's more than one type of breast cancer. 
So there's one called infiltrating or invasive ductal sarcoma. So starting in your milk ducts of your breast, this cancer breaks through the wall of your duct and spreads to surrounding breast tissue, making up about 80% of all cases. This is the most common type of breast cancer. Secondly, there's a cancer called ductal carcinoma in situ, also called stage zero breast cancer. It is the stage zero breast cancer ductal carcinoma in situ that is considered by some to be precancerous because the cells haven't spread beyond the milk duct. This condition is very treatable. However, prompt care is necessary to prevent the cancer from becoming invasive and spreading to other tissues. Next, there is infiltrating invasive lobular sarcoma. This cancer forms in the lobules of your breast where breast milk production takes place and has spread to surrounding breast tissue. It counts for about 10 to 15% of breast cancer. Then there is lobular carcinoma in situ. It's a precancerous condition in which there are abnormal cells in the, in the, in the lobules of your breast. It, it isn't a true cancer, but this marker can indicate the potential for breast cancer later on. So it's important for women with lobular carcinoma in situ to have regular clinical breast exams and mammograms. Mammograms are usually recommended at least once a year. But if you have some of these preconditions and these signs that indicate that it may be coming, it is best to have an exam more often. Next one is called triple negative breast cancer, TNBC. Now making up about 15% of all cases, triple negative breast cancer is one of the most challenging breast cancers to treat. It's called triple breast ne negative because it, it doesn't have three of the markers associated with other types of breast cancer. This makes prognosis and treatment very difficult. And then there's inflammatory breast cancer. Rare and aggressive, this type of cancer resembles an infection. People with inflammatory breast cancer usually notice redness, swellness, pitting, and dimpling of their breast skin. It's caused by obstructive cancer cells in their skin lymph vessels. And then there's Paget's disease of the breast. This cancer affects the skin of your nipple and areola, which is the skin around your nipple. So it's been around and they've been able to diagnose and categorize it in terms of different types. Lots of scientific research has been done on this, but still we don't have a cure. So can cancer form in other parts of the breast? Well, when we say breast cancer, we usually mean cancers that form in milk ducts or lobules, lobules. Cancer can also form in other parts of your breast, but these types of cancer are less common. These can include angiosarcoma, this rare type of cancer begins in the cells that make up the lining of blood or lymph vessels. This is the lining of the blood or lymph vessels. And then there's velodes tumors. Starting in the connective tissue, velodes tumors are rare. They're usually benign, which is non-cancerous, but they can be malignant, which is cancerous in some cases. How about signs? So what are the early signs of breast cancer? Breast cancer symptoms can vary for, for, for each person. Now the possible signs include uh, the following. I've mentioned some of these. One, a change in the size, shape, or contour of your breast. Now, just because there's a change in size or one's larger than the other doesn't necessarily mean that there's cancer. It's I've, I've seen uh, those that are not the same size. In most cases, most things are not completely 
asymmetrical. Another uh, sign may, may include uh, a mass or a lump, which feels like a small pea. Another, a lump or that, that is thickening in or near your breast or in your underarm that persists through your menstrual cycle. Another sign is a change in the look or feel of your skin on your breast or nipple, dimpling, puckering, or scaly and being inflamed. Another is redness of your skin on your breast nipple. Another sign is an area that is distinctly different from any other area on your breast. Another sign is a, a, a marble-like hardening area under your skin. And then uh, finally, another one is a blood-stained or clear fluid discharge from your nipple. Now, there's so many signs that one might on any given day, see some of this and get scared and run to the doctor to get examined and checked out, and they should. But the value of regular breast exam is such that you become familiar with your breast and you'll know whether or not there is truly a deviation or truly something that is happening that is abnormal that you need to be worried about. Some people don't notice any signs of breast cancer at all. Again, that's why you need to do an annual mammogram. So what causes cancer? Now we're getting to what perplexes me. Breast cancer develops when abnormal cells in your breast divide and multiply. Well, we know that. But experts don't know exactly what causes this process to begin in the first place. And that's disturbing. However, some research indicates that there are several risk factors that may increase your chances of developing breast cancer. These include age, being 55 or older, increases your risk for breast cancer. Although there's plenty of people that are 55, 85, 95, you don't have blood, blood uh, cancer. The next is, uh, is sex as an indicator. Women are more likely to develop breast cancer than men. So why is that? And then the third one is family history and genetics, okay? If your parents or siblings and children and close relatives have been diagnosed with breast cancer, then you're more likely to be, more likely to develop breast cancer at some point in life. So Cleveland Clinic goes on to say that about 5 to 10% of breast cancers are due to single abnormal genes that are passed down from parent to children, and that can be discovered by genetic testing. Well, that's great. So if you get genetic testing, then maybe you can know in advance what might be coming. Smoking, which most of us know, could be a contributing factor. It can be linked the many different types of cancer, specifically uh, lung cancer and includes breast cancer. Alcohol use, research indicates that drinking alcohol can increase your risk for certain types of breast cancer. And of course, obesity. Having obesity can increase your risk of breast cancer and breast cancer reoccurrence. Radiation exposure. If you've had prior radiation therapy, especially to your head, neck, or chest, you're more likely to develop breast cancer. Hormone replacement therapy. People who use hormone replacement therapy have a higher risk of being diagnosed with cancer as well. So when I look through the list of, of factors that may contribute to breast cancer, smoking and obesity sticks out as a couple of the same factors that can contribute to you uh, developing some other diseases like diabetes or high blood pressure. And so there's certain factors in lifestyle that one can live that can contribute to all kinds of diseases as you've heard me talk about uh, in the past. So there are many factors. So you should also, also and always talk with your healthcare provider to find out what your risks are. Now, getting back to my quest for 
really want to know what's happening here and why does it keep happening and, and, and why don't we know the answers. I ran across a meta-analysis conducted by Andrew Guyo. I like meta-analysis because it's a group of research articles and research analysis that's been done that have pulled them all together to try and figure out is there a common thread? Is there an answer in there somewhere? So Andrew Gale, Gale uh, concluded in, uh, in his research along with his, with his colleagues that there's a correlation between bovine leukemia virus, BLV, that infects cattle around the world and the T-cell leukemia virus found in humans, which is BLV, and is generally found at higher rates in humans who have or will develop breast cancer. Okay, let me let me repeat that and break that down. So their group is saying that there is a virus within cattle that exists around the world that seems to correlate with the T-cell leuke leukemia virus that are found in women who also have developed bre breast cancer or who will develop breast cancer. So there seems to be some type of connection between cattle, beef, and perhaps humans and breast cancer. So Guyo and his associates hypothesized that this transmission plays a role in breast cancer in humans. And when you think about it, as I mentioned earlier, uh, cows and cow milk is used to feed the entire world, beginning with children and then adults. So there's a study that they did, this global, a global analysis of milk and meat consumption showed that there are lower levels of breast cancer among countries that consume less milk and, 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 and dairy, less milk and dairy products, less milk and dairy products and beef than people in the United States. Okay, they have less breast cancer and they consume less milk and dairy products and beef. These countries include Australia, Japan, China, Mongolia, Bolivia, India, Argentina, and Sweden. So these countries have less breast cancer than people in the United States. Why? Well, the researchers think there may be a link between the milk and dairy and the meat. So let me let me go on and continue with the Cleveland article. So how is breast cancer diagnosed? Your healthcare provider will will perform a a breast ca cancer exam and ask you about your family history. Uh, they'll ask you about signs and symptoms, and they'll provide some tests. And I mentioned one of the tests. Already, there's something called a mammogram. This is a special x-ray imaging technique that is conducted, which can determine whether or not there may be some uh, problems with the breast. There's also an ultrasonic test that can be done, and it's used to diagnose lumps or abnormalities in the breast. And then there's the positron emission typography scan. It's also used to uh, diagnose cancer within the breast. And then there's the MRI, which you're familiar with, the magnetic resonance imaging. This test uses magnets and radio waves to produce clear, detailed images of the structures inside of your breast. Now, the fact that they use magnets and radio waves may lend itself to some of the, some of the crazy thinking about the fact that the flu shot or the COVID shot was going to introduce some magnets in your body and create problems for you, so you shouldn't take it. Well, here's an example of actually scientists do use with this MRI device magnets and radio waves to produce clear images of structures inside your breast. Okay, but they aren't putting anything into your body. So 
there's there's some stages of cancer, which I'll uh, mention here. There's stage zero, of course. This is when the disease is non-invasive. This means that it hasn't broke out of your breast duct. Stage one, the cancer cells are spread to the nearby breast tissue. And in stage two, the tumor is either smaller than two centimeters across and has spread to underarm lymph nodes or larger than five centimeters across, but hasn't spread to underarm lymph nodes. Tumors at this age can measure anywhere between two to five centimeters across and may or may not affect the nearby lymph nodes. And then there's stage three. At this stage, the cancer is spread beyond the point of origin. It may have invaded nearby tissue and lymph nodes, but it hasn't spread to distant organs. Stage three is usually referred to as locally advanced breast cancer. And then there's the fatal stage, stage five, four, I'm sorry. Stage four, the cancer is spread to areas away from your breast, such as your bones, your liver, your lungs, your brain, Stage four breast cancer is also called metastatic breast cancer. So there's ways to manage and treat this. It includes radiation, chemotherapy, hormone therapy, uh, lots of, uh, of things they can do to try and keep the, the, the disease from spreading. And your, your healthcare provider will tailor your treatment program to what your unique needs are. And uh, it is not uncommon to receive a combination of all of these or several of these. Uh, when it gets too bad and at a point where surgery is necessary, then you have to go through sur surgery to, to, to stay alive. And there are different types of surgeries. There's the lumpectomy, also called the partial mastectomy. And this is when partial of the parts of the breast are taken away, or let's say, one of the breasts and take it away that has the the disease in it. And then there's the mastectomy, which is the removal of the entire breast. Okay. And um, in some cases, the doctor can perform, you know, nipple sparing the mastectomy to preserve nipple and, and areola, which is the dark skin around the nipple. Many women uh, choose to undergo either immediate or delayed breast cancer reconstruction. reconstruction following a mastectomy. So uh, there's also a uh, sentinel node biopsy, auxiliary lymph node dissection, modified radical mastectomy. Radical mastectomy, where they take everything away and out. And, uh, um, and so again, you must check with your healthcare provider to see what works for you if for some reason you do uh, receive a diagnosis of cancer. So during this breast cancer month of October, please focus in on it. If you're female, go to the doctor, take other females to the doctor, um, encourage them to get breast exams regularly. Uh, and as I talk about in most of my communication and learning and teaching, is that lifestyle is important. Participating in physical activity and, and eating good food, healthy food, is so important to staying well and alive. And now we know, based upon this limited amount of research, that there's been some global studies that have analyzed the connection between consumption of meat and milk and dairy products to breast cancer in women. Now, we don't hear about that much. They don't talk about that because maybe that's where the answer is. But if that is the answer to getting rid of cancer in humans, that means that you got to cure that cow and get rid of that disease that is found in cows throughout the world. Or you have to stop eating meat and or consuming the milk from cows. Now, what would that do to the food industry? What would that do to the economy of America? It would do devastation to those industries. But it might save lives. 
What's more important, a dollar or life? Making money or making more healthy people? So I'll leave you with that thought. But remember, your health comes first. This is Dr. Richard Brown, and I'll see you around. This has been Your History and Health Comes First with Dr. Richard Brown. And you can leave suggestions at ewcfacts at gmail.com. That's ewcfacts at gmail.com. This has been an EWC Communication production.